Welcome everybody to this edition of Passion Life with John and Mark. We're going to be discussing the third wave today, which is really a reference to praying for the next, uh, the next wave to hit in the pro-life movement. We're going to be explaining what we mean by that. Um, and what we mean by that is the end of abortion will be in sight when black and Latino leaders in the pro-life community are not only joining in heartily in pro-life work, but that they are in leadership and taking leadership roles in the pro-life efforts in America. John, it's good to see you as always. Good to be with you, Mark. In uh, 2008, I think it was, several years ago, you wrote an article called The Third Wave. Um, and it was a, really a call to a movement of prayer. Maybe you can explain the, the article to us and what you, were, what you had in mind at that time. Yeah, I posted this article uh, over at the Desiring God website. If you want to go back and read it, it came out in January of, 20, of 2008. And it was really a call for us uh, in the Christian community to pray for what I call the third wave. And my belief is that when the African-American community and the Latino community uh, join the pro-life cause that we will see the end of abortion as a business anyway in sight because the business of abortion feeds primarily off of these communities. It traffics in the shedding of blood and most of the abortion businesses, particularly Planned Parenthood, uh, establishes itself mostly in urban areas in predominantly minority neighborhoods. And so when the black and Hispanic community rejects abortion, then the business will collapse. Now, I think it might take longer for the laws to change that will be the final point of victory because for many people, their, their moral system starts with what is the law. What is legal is right. Uh, and as long as abortion is legal, we will have more work to do. But as a business, and abortion is a business, it needs to feed off of this particular, uh, the minority communities. And so the, I, I'm calling for us to pray for a third wave, a, a huge uh, gathering of African-American and Latinos to join in the cause of life and not only join it, but to lead it. And I call it the third wave for this reason. The pro-life movement in its modern uh, reiteration uh, really began as uh, a Catholic movement. And when I was a young man uh, and you talked about pro-life, the first thing that you heard people say, well, I'm not Catholic. Because the only voices raising their plea for the unborn were the Catholic Church. They perceived, uh, even before Roe v. Wade was passed, what was at stake. And most of the evangelical world didn't really grasp what abortion was, or our theology of life was very underdeveloped. Um, and there was a lot of crazy theology called quickening and other types of things that says it's not a human being until you feel the baby moving, which is just sort of not good science. And then you, bad, you base bad theology on top of bad science. So for many evangelicals, they didn't know how to respond to the legalization of abortion, but the Catholics did. And they really were the first wave and they began to raise their voices and they began to create uh, what we call today the, uh, the uh, right to life movement. And the initial first pregnancy crisis intervention services in our country were all started by uh, the Catholic community. And then something very uh, gracious happened. Uh, in the 70s, uh, Dr. Francis Schaeffer, Dr. C. Everett Koop wrote a book called Whatever Happened to the Human Race? And it was made into a video series and it was shown in many, many evangelical churches uh, as, a, as a film series. And in that set of videos, they began to show how 
historic Orthodox Christianity had always defended the weak, the innocent, including the unborn. And they began to really raise the issue that this was a moral crisis, a biblical crisis for people of faith in the evangelical church. And then this was caught up by uh, the largest uh, voices in our community at that time. That would have been uh, uh, Dr. Dobson, uh, Dr. James D. Kennedy, uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell. They were all people who had big platforms in radio and they began to take up the cause. And as they started to trumpet the cause of life, really in the 70s, it led to a whole uh, thousands and thousands of people joining the cause of life. The evangelicals just swept in. It was the second wave. And we began especially to develop pregnancy help clinics in neighborhoods across the country. So the movement of pregnancy centers just exploded during the 80s and the 90s as a result of this second wave that came in. And I became convinced in around 2004, 2005, that what was missing, what was going to hold our movement back was that the people that are most uh, targeted by abortion were also the community that is most absent in our movement. That we were a suburban, white, Catholic, evangelical movement. And I began to pray earnestly and began to work toward developing uh, better relationships with our minority churches in my city in Boston, and later on moved down to Miami to work with some minority churches there, and just began to rally as many people as I could, say, we need to pray for the third wave, because when the black and Latino community rushes into this movement, abortion as a business cannot survive. It will collapse. And so that's what I've been praying for really since 2008. Yeah, so this article that you wrote originally, I, I think there's a current uh, version of it, both on the Desiring God website and also on the Passion Life website in the blog section. For, so for folks who want to read that, we can link that into the social media uh, bios as we go uh, to this article that you wrote. So just to summarize, the first wave was the fact that the Catholics were sort of the torchbearers for many years and sort of on their own as the torchbearers in the pro-life movement. And thank God for the Catholics. They were, uh, they were strong on this issue at a time when the evangelicals uh, were anemic and were not organized. And then the second wave uh, came in the 70s and 80s as, as the Protestants and evangelicals began to join the Catholics in standing in communities very practically for helping women uh, in their pregnancy crisis and beginning to organize uh, pregnancy health centers. And now we are praying for what you envisioned back in 2004, five, uh, for this third wave, the third wave being when Latinos and African-Americans and people of color are not only joining in vocally in the pro-life movement, but are becoming national forefront leaders in the movement. When that happens, the, the institution of abortion, not the legality of abortion, as you say, it's gonna take a lot of years for that to change, but the institution and primarily Planned Parenthood simply will not be able to feed itself if, uh, if the African-Americans and the Latino people are, are leading the charge and leading the cause. So since, um, since you wrote this article in 2008, what have you seen come about? What's transpired? Have we made any progress toward seeing that third wave arrive, John? Yeah, I think we have, which is uh, the exciting part. Um, there have been waves within the black community in particular. There were these early pioneers. They're one of the most wonderful people I ever met in my life was Dr. Mildred Jefferson. She was the first African-American graduate of the Harvard uh, Medical School, uh, School of Medicine. And uh, she was a founder in the Right to Life movement. Uh, uh, and she lived in Boston. I got to know her pretty well there. But she was a lonely, lonely voice for a long, long time. And uh, 
There were others like uh, uh, Pastor Johnny Hunter, um, Walter Hoy, Day Gardner. These are names that are not well known uh, in the culture, but within the pro-life community, these are names that of pioneers and voices within the black community that really stood up for life without much support from their churches or their communities, to be honest with you. And then these uh, names multiplied and gathered in other voices. And now a number of these newer voices have actually become quite prominent within the pro-life movement in general. Uh, I think, first of all, of Alveda King, uh, the niece of Martin Luther King, carried the King mantle, carries it to this day. Um, and she began to uh, express her own regret over abortion um, and to defend the innocent and, and, and said that the extension of the civil rights movement is the pro-life movement. That's where the next battle for civil human rights needs to go. And she... Uh, she endured a lot over those years, uh, rejection from uh, friends and, and, and family that uh, saw this through more of a political lens of being more of the conservative, white, Republican, and, uh, uh, and just stood her ground and endured it. And then over the years, uh, people like Dean Nelson and Star Parker, uh, uh, Bishop Harry Jackson, one of my favorites is Ryan Bomberger, uh, conceived and raped, adopted by a white family, uh, grows up and uh, starts uh, the Radiant Foundation that's just really marketing the message of black genocide in the black community. That's what they call it. Um, really exposing how abortion is devastating the black community. Ben Carson. A lot of these are now national figures, national names now. And so they have not only joined the movement, they are, they are true leaders of the movement today. So now in the last six or 12 months, it seems like there's another big sign of answer prayer coming forward. Um, there's a real cultural leader, an influencer uh, that has the power to influence millions of people. And uh, I didn't see it coming. Uh, but I think I'm, I'm thinking mostly of Kanye West and, and how he has become such a powerful voice for life in the culture. I know you've been tracking some of what he's been saying and doing. Yeah, I'm not an expert on all things Kanye West, but Kanye West is interesting to us as uh, people who work in the pro-life movement because as an African-American man, and not only that, but one who's running for president right now, he is strongly standing on the platform of pro-life. It's extremely unusual for a conservative uh, black voice uh, to stand on a pro-life platform, but he's doing that. He announced his candidacy for president on the 4th of July this year. On the 19th of July, he held a rally, presidential rally in Charleston, South Carolina. It was sort of a town hall, very informal. He didn't even have a microphone. He was allowing people to come up on stage to ask questions. And he talked a lot about abortion that night. And one of the things that came out was that he, when he was pregnant, when, when Kim Kardashian, his current wife, uh, found out that she was pregnant with their first child, they talked about having an abortion for one, two, three months. In fact, at one point, she had the abortion pills in her hand, uh, ready to, to take that chemical abortion. And he talked about the fact that she stood in the end, she was the one who said, we're going to have this baby. And it reminded him that when his mother was pregnant with him 43 years ago, his father wanted to abort him, but his mother saved his life. She had the moral conviction to say, no, we're going to have this baby. And he broke down in tears right on the stage. Uh, he was reduced. I think, for one thing, uh, he was overwhelmed by the emotion of this circumstance. But amazingly, I think he was also uh, ashamed that he considered aborting his own baby, who's now seven years old. Uh, North, his daughter, is a beautiful seven-year-old girl. Of course, they love her. Of course, they're glad that they did not abort her. And he was overwhelmed with emotion, thinking about the fact that he almost took her life. 
And the people there that night were touched by the humility of that moment and the fact that he had been so candid and they cheered for him and they applauded him and they, they consoled him. You didn't do it. You did the right thing, Kanye. Um, but in subsequent weeks, he was called out for crying over abortion. Now, John, you just talked about the book of Lamentation, how important it is to weep over abortion. And what Kanye said subsequently was, if we can't weep over this, if our nation is going to make fun of me for weeping over this, what can we weep over? This is what we should be weeping over as a nation. And if we're not weeping over the death of innocent human beings, I'm concerned for our country. Basically, I'm paraphrasing what he said. And this is, this, this is why I think this goes back to the third wave idea. I wrote another article some years ago where I tried to make the point that the Bible the book of Lamentations is to help us weep over certain wicked things and, and that there are some things that are worth weeping over. So maybe a couple hundred people read that article, maybe, maybe a thousand. I don't exactly have a great big platform here. But here's a man who stands up and he demonstrates weeping. And then he calls us out and says, there are some things worth weeping over. And literally tens of millions of people now have heard this call to weep over the wickedness of shedding innocent blood in the context of abortion. And uh, that, that's God moving among us and, and answering our prayers that people would turn from their wicked ways and begin to seek the Lord again. And this is why I want us to be uh, praying seriously and intentionally uh, for us to continue to see this wave grow, the third wave to come in and grow and multiply. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to see God do something quite striking during our lifetime and to bring down and to make abortion history in a way that I've never seen it possible before until the last five or 10 years. Yeah, it's exactly right. Kanye's uh, loud voice on, on, on the pro-life platform is really an indication that the third wave is coming. Here is a prominent African-American leader, a voice, um, speaking on this topic, and it's, it, it's an indication that the third wave is coming. And it's an answered prayer, and it's a call, John, to keep praying. It's a call to say, the wave is coming. This is the time to, to buckle down, to get on our knees, and to pray that African-American, Latino uh, leaders would continue to come to the fore on this issue. That's why you and I are going to be joining uh, the movement that's already underway. They're calling it The Return. It's been going on this week, and the culmination of it is on Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, the 26th. Uh, it's, it's going to be on the National Mall uh, this weekend, and a lot of leaders are coming together not to pray against abortion, not to hold a political rally, but just to call the nation to a solemn assembly, as the Bible refers to in the book of Joel, to weep, to pray, to return to the Word of God, to return to the ways of God, to repent of our sin as a nation. We're going to be uh, joining in that prayer movement. We're calling all of Passion Life to join in that prayer movement. John, there are going to be some great leaders and great speakers there on Saturday. I know that it's being organized by uh, folks like uh, Robert uh, Jonathan Kahn, who is a, a, prominent, uh, a prominent Messianic Jew, completed Jew, uh, evangelical pastor and rabbi. Um, folks like Dobson and Pat Robertson and Alveda King is going to be there as one of the speakers. Um, Bishop Henry Jackson, who is um, another prominent African-American voice. Harry Jackson. Uh, it should be a great event. It should be a call to repentance like, we've, like what we've been talking about. And, and this is the type of prayer movement that will bring in the third wave. I, uh, I pray that that is so. I think it's, it's, a, it's a way for us to demonstrate to God our seriousness, uh, to take the time to have a time of corporate prayer, public prayer, uh, even if we do it from our homes because of COVID, we're joining in this public presentation uh, in which we're asking the Lord uh, 
to wash away our sins and to show his mercy or as the as the songwriter said to shed his grace on thee meaning our country and um, uh, I think it's important for us I'm glad to participate in my own way and to, to invite our passion life community to to join us and I know that as this wave grows it reverberates all around the world to the very places that we still need to get to so um, welcome to this event and uh, take the time to put it in your schedule and join us uh, to pray for the third wave. You can find more information about The Return at thereturn.org, thereturn.org. John, truly the end of abortion as a business, um, as Planned Parenthood, is con- as far as Planned Parenthood is concerned, is in sight when prominent leaders of color are not only joining the pro-life movement, but leading it. We're seeing that come to fruition. We're praying for it. Um, Thanks for sharing your thoughts on these things, both in 2008 and today, John. I'm excited to see what God will do among us yet. Amen. Thank you. God bless. God bless.